Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Hogan, and this is my Zero Carb Life. I am joined today by Michaela Peterson, and I'm actually, um, I'm a little shaky this morning, Michaela. I am so nervous about talking to you, and I can't even exactly explain why, but welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me, Kelly. So this is a really safe space and I feel so happy for you right now because when you do a carnivore episode, I go and I read the comments and here on this channel, it's about 25,000 super sweet carnivores that you would like me hugging at a family reunion while you feed each other steak. (laughs) And then I go and I read the comments on on your podcast where you can easily get 100,000 views, but then I read and I'm like, oh my gosh, they have... Have they ever listened to you before talk about where you've come from? And it they're kind of harsh, you know, comments about how you're ruining the environment. And I get, I have basically <laughs> one, one guy named David on this channel who hates everything that I do, but he watches anyway. And the rest are really nice. And I'm glad to have a David because I think we all need one. But I feel like a lot of people who listen to your podcast, probably because you have such a wide variety of guests, it's not a carnivore show. Yeah. So about carnivore, you get everybody that shows up and a lot of them really don't get it. So first question to you is, why do you keep bringing it up? I'm actually glad you asked that question because it def- the negativity that I get from talking about it definitely pushes me in the direction of being like, you know what, maybe I'll stick to what my audience is interested in, yeah. which is self-improvement still, which you would think diet would be a big component, like the main component of that. But I was like, you know, if I bring something political up, I get a lot less kickback than if I talk about the carnivore diet. But when I first started dieting, um, I didn't start with a carnivore diet. I started dieting in 2015 and it was it was pretty heavy on meat, but it certainly wasn't carnivore. Uh, and I didn't want to talk about it at all. I spent a year really not telling anybody I was doing anything because every time I brought it up, people were like, oh, you're only eating 17 foods which is better than now, but, uh, that like, that was a ton of food, but, oh, you're only eating 17 foods. And I got all this negative kickback and I went to talk to doctors about it. And the doctors basically told me I was crazy and that the things I was experiencing, especially with cutting out certain foods and it being beneficial to my health, that that wasn't possible. So I decided not to talk about it. That was 2015. And then I had these food reactions where I kept trying to reintroduce foods and um, we can get into that in a minute, but I had really horrifying food reactions that didn't seem believable. And I would tell people about them and they'd say that that's deaf, like you're crazy basically. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a year and a half. And after that, when my autoimmune symptoms would come back and my depression would come back, um, I figured, okay, I have to start talking about it because if there's anybody else out there that's experiencing these things, I don't want them to feel like I feel, which is really isolated and kind of insane. Because at that point, I didn't know about the communities online. I wasn't part of the carnivore community yet. Um, And I wasn't even familiar with paleo and keto. And in 2015, that was it wasn't as widespread. It's still fringe, but it wasn't as widespread as it is now even. So the reason I still talk about it is because if I hadn't found the carnivore diet or started dieting in the first place, I wouldn't be the person I am right now. I was told I was dying. Like, and I'm, that's not an exaggeration. I really was dying and it completely transformed my life. And I don't think it's fair of me to have that kind of experience. And then not tell anybody just in case there's a person listening that could be transformed as well. So I figured I'll just take the backlash because I get a lot of positive comments too. And a lot of people who don't know anything about diet do end up at least identifying the fact that maybe they shouldn't be eating mainly grains and just things like that. So um, I am like, it is tempting to get rid of that portion, but I would just feel terrible if I did. Yes. So hip replacement ankle replacement at like age 16, right? 17. Yeah. 17. So I had failing health before finding this diet too. And that's what drives me as well. Someone shared with me. And so I feel like you have to, it would be so selfish. I agree completely, Mm -hmm. but my health problems were like boils, 
infertility. Still. <laughs> no, it was legit. I had some problems. I was obese. That was the one that everybody is always most interested in. They're like, sure, you improved your I health. Know. Let's talk about the scale some more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, honestly, when I start like it's true. I put transformations up on my Instagram and people are mainly interested if there's a big weight difference. If it goes from very, very, very skinny to normal, that also piques interest. Yeah. But the like, it's too bad because you can have somebody who's really overweight and who isn't nearly as sick as somebody who yes. has an autoimmune disorder who's a normal weight, right? Yeah. You can have people who don't look as visibly ill, but I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with focusing on that. When I first started dieting, so I, I went to like what would now be called a very restrictive autoimmune paleo, something like that. Yeah. Um, I did it because I was getting this blistering rash and it was on my back and it was on my bum. And then it started getting on my face. Oh. And I was like, I cannot live like that. So anything right. like, you know, boils, cystic acne, I had this rash, stuff that makes people see that you're ill yes really does encourage people to change their ways so it, it's too bad that people focus on just the visual aspect but i think it's important it is um carnivore charles washington used to say that only the lucky ones get fat because it's the most obvious thing that drives people to change and yet it's not a massive health issue as far as being you know in pain daily it drives yeah. change because you can see it in the mirror and you're yeah. right um on a transformation picture maybe only the lucky ones get fat because it makes for amazing before and after pictures <laughs> but you're right the mental changes that come for people you can't capture that in a photo all the time and yeah. and yet that's really what should be you know celebrated at least as much Oh, yeah. Or if not more, when I was 23, when I first started, this is like I said, before I got to carnivore, when I first started dieting, I had was diagnosed with bipolar type two, idiopathic hypersomnia, um, this juvenile idiopathic arthritis, this rash called dermatitis herpetiformis. Um, that's off the top of my head. There were more. Those were the major ones. I was later diagnosed with celiac disease and tested positive for Lyme. So I just had, oh my gosh. I had so many problems, but the depression that accompanied the bipolar, it was mainly, it was mainly depression. That was the worst by far, even though my arthritis was bad enough that my hip and ankle had been replaced. It's the few mornings that I have woken up through my entire life and felt anxiety, man, that's scary. It, yeah. Yeah, I would say that's that's scarier than finding a boil on your backside. Oh, yeah, 100 100 percent. The extremely overwhelming fatigue was pretty bad, but I still would have chosen that over the depression. Like if you have a skewed worldview where everything is covered in a cloud of doom, there's like it's wor it's like being in chronic pain in your head. I was listening to a podcast with you and Dr. Paul Saladino the other day. And I was, I was so proud of you. So I'm listening and he's talking about our need for vitamin C as carnivores and how if, sorry, that's my Chewini Otis hacking. Um, <laughs> every podcast needs a hacking Chewini in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about how you can get this 70 milligrams of vitamin C that we all apparently need if we will eat um, liver frequently, thymus and brain. And I was listening and I thought, is she going to say it? Is she going to say it? And then I was like, I was nervous for you, even though obviously this was not live. And you leaned back and you said, yeah, I, I don't really eat liver. I, about once a year, I crave it. That's when my body wants it. So I eat it and then I don't want it anymore. And I kind of saw a look on his face like, oh, <laughs> were you nervous in that moment to pipe up and be like, yeah, I'm not taking the supplement. I'm not eating the liver and I'm not deficient or uh, yeah, I do. When I when I have doctors, specifically doctors on the show and they say things, um, I'm I'm a pretty polite person, but I'm also pretty disagreeable. So I'll generally say, yeah, that's not ex <laughs> the, right. the yeah first. Yeah, the Canadian. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but no, um, I like what Paul's doing for spreading the word of the carnivore diet. Any doctor who says this is a doable thing and put some research up. It does give credit to the diet compared to P 
people like us who have been doing it, but don't have MD in their title. So I, I appreciate that. But there isn't a lot of, as you've probably talked about, there isn't a lot of scientific evidence. There aren't a lot of studies on people doing this. People don't really know. So if people say, oh, you need to eat thymus to get something, it's like, no, most people who who come to the diet too, the way I figured out my health was listening really, really carefully to my body. I talked to Dr. Terry Walls. Do you know of hers? She does the Walls protocol. No. So she had MS for like, she was wheelchair bound. She couldn't sit up and she had MS really terribly. And she came up with a protocol um, that cured her MS. She still has like old lesions in her spine, but she can bike and run and she's been very healthy. And she does a diet that was very similar to the diet I first started out on. Um, so she's not a pro carnivore diet person. And she brought up the fact that, oh, I'm worried about vitamin C, which is reasonable for somebody who hasn't done a lot of delving into the vitamin C issue in the community. But yeah, I was a little bit anxious with Paul, but my experience with liver specifically is for the first 10 months, I just ate steak. And then suddenly I always hated liver with like a fiery passion. Yes. Uh, I always thought it was bitter and gross. And I think it does depend on the liver you get. Like veal liver is way better than cow liver and okay. depends how you cook it. But I tried it about 10 months into the diet and it was sweet. And I was like, oh, I actually like this. And I ate quite a bit of it for about a month. And then it started to taste bad again. And I thought, okay, well, I'm not going to eat it anymore, right? I'm not going to force myself to eat something that's making me gag. That's right. probably a sign my body doesn't want it. So for the last, so then I've found generally in the winter around now, like I November, I ate a ton of liver and now I don't really want it anymore. It seems to hit maybe when there's less sun or something, and then I'll eat a bunch of liver, but I don't do supplements. I, I talk to a lot of really chronically ill people who are vitamin deficient. And I think if you're vitamin deficient, then certain supplements might be worth looking into until your body regulates properly. But I think the general rule of once you're over the sugar cravings is tricky, right? Because yes. the initial part, you can't really listen to your body because all it wants to do is eat pizza. Yes. You have to wait but then once you're kind of used to the diet, it's better just to go with what you crave. If you want leaner meat, eat more protein for a while. If you want more fat, eat more fat for a while. If you don't want to eat salt, don't eat salt. If you want to eat salt, eat salt. Um, and putting these guidelines where it's like you have to eat thymus. To be fair, I've never tried thymus. No, Maybe it's wonderful. And he did make he made a point in the episode where he was like, well, what about people who haven't tried liver? How do they know if they want it? I heard that. Which like fair, maybe try liver and see because I tried it and it was sweet at one point. And I was yeah. like, OK, but I don't think that we should be telling people they need to take, especially telling chronically ill people who are trying to get off of medication, get off of supplements that they need to take certain supplements to get all their vitamins, especially given the fact that it looks like people on a carnivore diet for the most part have completely different vitamin C needs than the rest of the population that are eating carbs. Yeah, I, it, it is really interesting. I uh, I don't eat any dairy. When I first cut out foods, uh, the main inflammatory foods for me were gluten-containing grains, dairy, soy, and legumes, and egg whites. So it's funny. The reason that I kind of separated myself out from the rest of the carnivore community with the carnivore diet just being everything animal protein yeah. is because I found for me for sure, but also for a lot of people who have autoimmune disorders specifically, uh, dairy and egg whites are something that you should carefully reintroduce to see how you respond to it. Because I've had people com uh, contact me and they go, the carnivore diet's not working. I've been on it for three months and it's not working. Why isn't it working? Or I haven't lost weight. Yeah. And a lot of these people are eating like a ton of cheese every day yes. and cheese doesn't work well with them. Um, so I separated myself out and then called this the lion diet, which is like the boring version that's just ruminant meat, salt water, um, whatever organs you want to eat with that, you know, yeah. just ruminant meat as a whole, um, just as like a starting place. And I think Judy, the nutritionist who, yeah. who I really like, yes. um, I got her book, oh, Carnival which, Cure Man. oh yeah, she's good. She's um, good. like I, I've had, a, I've, I've flipped through like Sean's book and Paul's yeah. book too, but Judy's book is good for, I think, an intro. And it starts off with basically what I'm doing, which is ruminant meat, and then says, if you want, you can add in 
other things a little bit later. I so I like what she's doing. She really approaches it like you did as an elimination. Yeah. For health and to see what works for you. I am able to tolerate dairy, not so much cheese, butter, but butter, butter. I can, I can totally deal with butter. It does not. It's crazy how different it is for me than cheese cheese. I get addicted to wow. it. Um, oh, I do just fine with butter. My skin breaks out with cheese. I gain, I get puffy with cheese, butter. I don't know. It's completely different, right? It has it way different. less of everything that cheese has in it. But yeah, cheese was just terrible for Ugh, me. That was, yeah. I tried to reintroduce it when I went to the super low carb diet. So I was eating meat and fish and like sweet potatoes, parsnips, some greens. That was basically okay. it for the low carb version. And I, cheese was like the one thing I really, really missed. And I tried to reintroduce it. And I swear I almost died. I'd become lactose intolerant in a month, oh, which yeah. I didn't even know was possible because I'd been eating milk and cheese for my whole life. I was instantly lactose intolerant and I tried to reintroduce cheese and was just like, holy shit. That was, I thought I had to go to the hospital. Oh my gosh. Now yeah. it's one of the very first things I tell people to be suspect of on if they're already carnivore, obviously they're not eating pizza. And still having problems. Yeah. yeah. So for the first two years on the diet, I couldn't touch anything that wasn't ruminant meat. If I had like, I think, cause if you have C. diff, then your gut is leaky right? And you're not, yes. there's no fixing the leaky gut until that infection is gone. Yeah. And so I'd have, there were a couple of times I went to a restaurant and they accidentally put pepper on my steak, just a little bit of pepper. Right. And I'd have a full blown immune response. And it was like nuts for a year and a half. And then I got rid of the C. difficile. I still didn't touch anything else because I was worried, but I did reintroduce fish about six months later because I wasn't able to tolerate that at the beginning. Okay. And that went fine. And now I'm drinking. So now I can have fish and chicken, which I miss chicken. Oh, you so can much. have chicken again. Yeah. Chicken wings. So yes. fish, chicken, sardines, and I'm drinking tea, which is a plant Yeah, uh, with no problems. And I had something the other day that had a little bit of pepper on it and that didn't bug me. So I'm definitely less sensitive, which is also a misconception with this diet that you, you start it and you yeah. sensitize yourself. But oh, there are some diets like the GAPS diet and her first step, she's really smart. Natasha Campbell McBride. Yeah, I had um, her on right after you did. You did. <laughs> yeah. And her first her. step, she, she's, she's, she's so smart. She's so Russian. Yes. Uh, um, but yeah, her first step, I guess, as your audience knows, is a animal-based diet to heal yeah. and seal the gut. So I'm, I'm hoping, like I feel really good on the carnivore diet. Um, but if I could have a little bit of leeway and go to what some people are doing, that's like carnivore esque, right. that's what I'd prefer. Cause I did really like salads and things. Yeah. If I'm stuck on this because my immune system is insane, right. that's totally fine. I'm happy that I have tea now and things. Yeah. And I'm happy now if I go to a restaurant and there's something touching my steak in the kitchen, I'm not going to have a month long reaction. Like that was. I was like, that's too much. Like I'll stick with the diet, but if I get a pepper, like one pep piece of pepper, like calm down body, um, <laughs> right. but I do seem to be doing a lot better. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I don't have to be very careful, but mine did not start as a gut type issue. Mine was more just inflammation and obesity. So seasonings, I can eat pretty heavily seasoned chicken wings Ooh. and have from the beginning, not sauces. And because for me, it's more of a, anything sweet it's it's a trigger kind of thing oh yeah yeah so i have That's to watch fair. that more yeah more than like autoimmune so when you agreed to do this interview i became like a little crazed michaela stalker and i went <laughs> online and i read things now i had already seen you on uh, sean baker's show in 2018 and i remember when i first heard of you two or three years ago and i asked the person they said oh do you know michaela peterson and that was the first time i had heard of you I had not, I was not familiar with a, a Jordan Peterson at all. I had no background, but they said, do you know Michaela Peterson? And I said, no, who is that? And they said, she does. Um, and I don't know at that point if they'd said lion diet, but they described what you did. And the way they described it was she just eats beef. No, it's like the carnivore diet, but only beef, lots of salt and fasting. And at that point I was like, I, I didn't look more because I thought I knew everything I needed to know, Michaela. 
So then I saw you on Sean Baker and I was like, oh, there's so much more to you than salt and fasting. I didn't know your backstory. I, you looked so young. I was like, okay, so there's a young girl who says beef, salt and fasting. That's all I knew. <laughs> all right. And then I listened to you, you know, that tends to help. And you were fantastic. Fast forward to this month where you agreed to come on the show. And I thought, I would ask people their questions and everybody's like, you don't know Jordan Peterson. I did not. Can you believe that? I, I can. Now, oh, you can because yeah. wow. Millions of followers. I don't know what rock I have been under. So I found you literally just for you. I, I didn't know about your family. So once I started reading as your newest stalker, I felt like I needed a bag of pork rinds. It's like, oh my gosh, the, the political side, professor of psychology who got involved with the courts over pronoun issues, wrote this book. It's like, oh, mom, cancer scared, dad, some mental concerns. Parents were on the carnivore diet. Oh my gosh. It was like a watching <sighs> amazing series. There was so yeah, much. I tried living it. Well, that's what I, I tried to imagine. So were, were your parents really well known as you were growing up or has this just been in the last few years? No, this is just since 2016. Okay. I had a video that went viral in 2016 about they were mandating certain speech requirements in, in Canada. And he had a video about not wanting speech, any type of speech to be mandated. It turned into this whole politically correct pronoun battle, but the initial idea was just don't mandate any type of speech law. He was saying, it's not that I refuse to call someone what they want to be called. That's fine. I don't think the law should deem that I have to speak the way someone else wants me to speak. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was it. It was just, just don't get the law involved. Then I had so many more questions. So are your First of all, how are your parents doing? They're doing much better. Things are much, much better. Like health problems have always been an issue, my, mainly with me and my family. My, I don't know how my brother got out of this all. I, I have a younger brother and he's just like, leave me out of this. Okay. But um, my mom had really severe gut troubles. She's got celiac disease, but didn't know. So she stopped eating wheat, you know, 20 years ago. And everyone was just like, ah, mom and her wheat allergy because we didn't know what was going on um and my dad's had really severe depression and he had GERD and gum disease and he was taking two or three hour naps a day and when I went on the diet in 2015 when I went on this low very low carb diet in 2015 mm -hmm. it was so transformative for me within the first three months that I was like dad you, you know my depression lifted for the first time in my for my entire life. It never lifted. And I was like, dad, you have to get on this diet. This is insane. And my parents both looked at me and they thought, well, she's not taking Adderall for idiopathic hypersomnia. She's awake. She's clearer. She's off all the medication. Like, okay, this is real. My rash was gone, right? It was a very visible change. So he went on the diet and in the next like eight months, he lost 40 pounds. Um, his GERD went away. He stopped napping. His depression lifted. And th this was before carnivore. This was on the very, very low carb diet. Um, and then that September 2016, he made this video and it went viral. And then he wrote, he'd been writing a book at the time. So then his, his book came out, he went on tour. And then I eventually, so that low carb diet, it did work for me initially, yeah. but then it stopped working when I got pregnant. And all my autoimmune symptoms came back, my body sensitized. I'd also taken another round of antibiotics, which I think just flattened whatever health my gut had. Um, and so I found the carnivore diet and dad was still having lingering anxiety. Um, and so I got him. It took me like four months of pressure to get him on the carnivore diet. He was just at meat and greens. I was like, maybe if you cut the greens, you'll, your anxiety will, will go away. And it worked. Um, so he went on the carnivore diet and then that, and then he went on Rogan and, and told Rogan that he was on this carnivore diet and that I was on the carnivore diet. And then the news went crazy about an all beef diet and how that was going to kill everybody. Yeah. Um, but this is new, like any of this being known online at all started in late 2016. Okay. Yet reading that, it was hard for me to gauge if your family had always been 
in the spotlight. So growing up, you had a fairly normal childhood, minus, you know, being deathly ill most of the time. <laughs> uh, I don't think it, like, I used to think, yeah, that it was normal, but uh-huh. it turns out my family is a odd, which I didn't know until I went to university and then was like, oh, this is, a, the growing up was a little bit weird, but it wasn't in the spotlight and yeah i think the main problems we really had to deal with was the fact that i was so ill i feel like my family is odd in some ways i grew up the daughter of a baptist minister and now i'm starting to realize that i think most everyone feels like their family is odd when i came home sorry i went off to university and i was like oh and i met some other families and i thought okay it's a little bit different than what i experienced growing up and i went home that christmas uh for christmas And I had a painting of Lenin fall on me when I was sleeping. And that wasn't like, that was what our house was like. So I don't know if that gives any example, but it was like, I was just like, great. Dad, can you move your Lenin painting? Okay. So maybe just beliefs, philosophies, politics, ideas were kind of different. Yeah. And my parents are both super open. So open very open people, (laughs) which is also why I guess that they eventually, my mom was always kind of into diet. So as soon as I started something, she was like, Oh, a new diet. Um, my dad was more scientifically inclined, but he saw the change in me and thought, well, you can't really argue with that. Are they still eating really meat based? Are they still carnivore? Yeah. Ish. Yeah. So uh, my mom, so my mom started the diet and was almost immediately diagnosed with a very deadly cancer. Mm. Um, She got, she went on the diet. Her arthritis went away. She had arthritis badly enough in her thumbs that she stopped being a massage therapist and in her knees. So she stopped skiing and things. So she was getting this, you know, old person arthritis, osteoarthritis. And I was like, nah, right? Like, no, I bet it's diet. Um, And so she went on it. Her arthritis went away. Um, and then she got diagnosed with this cancer that the media was like, it's the diet. It's like, this cancer has been around for a while. So no. Um, and it takes, you know, who knows how long for a body to decide it's going to become cancerous. Yes. Right. So she stayed on it though. Um, and she's tried, she had surgery. She miraculously recovered from this cancer and she's tried a number of times to reintroduce plants, um, because she had to have one of her kidneys removed. And the doctor, yeah, it was a, it's been a terrible couple of years, yeah. but the doctor said, you know, don't have too much protein because oh. you're, you've got some levels that are weird. Yeah. I think it was creatinine was high and was like, don't eat too much protein. She was like, well, I'm on this carnivore diet. So she tried to reintroduce plants, but then it upset her digestion. Her arthritis came back. Okay. So she's good now. Um, her high ish creatinine levels don't have anything to do with the diet. It's just, but um, she's still on it. Um, she's a, she never had any of the like neurological or psychiatric issues that I had. Yeah. It was mainly arthritis and digestion. Okay. She's on it. And then my dad is on it and he's as strict as me still. He's still on the uh, lion diet and he does not enjoy that. Like okay. he would much rather be eating other things, but we both... Um, this depression we had, we were both taking SSRIs for, I was taking them for 11 years and he was saying he took them for 15 or something. And when the depression lifted, we both kind of stopped over, you know, I stopped over a period of two weeks and it turns out, especially with some people, but with us for sure, we probably should have been weaning down for like a year, maybe two weaning micro tapering down. So I stopped and then I had When I went on Rogan, I talked about the fact that when I reintroduced soy, I hallucinated. I had a horrible response and I hallucinated. And I'm not someone who casually hallucinates. (laughs) Um, And and someone said, maybe it was SSRI withdrawal. And I was like, no, you don't get SSRI withdrawal. And it turns out you can kind of sensitize your brain if you stop taking these medications right away. And they do cause dependence and they do cause physical changes. Like we went to... We went to Russia for my dad's health and they did an MRI and they said, oh, you have brain changes from the SSRI. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. You can't have brain changes from the SS from SSRIs, but it was just something they casually mentioned there. 
brain changes from, you know, a decade and a half of SSRIs. So we are more sensitive because of being on medication, I'm sure. Um, And this propensity towards depression. Uh, He's still on it. He tried to, in the summer, I tried to reintroduce plants to kind of test my sensitivity. Uh And um, after a couple of weeks, I just tried like cooked fruit. And after a couple of weeks, I was bloated and my joints hurt, but I didn't have the kind of psychiatric effect that it used to, which was a huge relief. Um, and he, so, so he was like, well, I'm going to do it too. But he ended up with back pain and he's still super sensitive because he's still damaged from these medications. So we'll be on this like for a while before um, we can expand a little bit. Spices would be nice though. I, yes. I do like spices would be a good addition. One day. Yeah, I'm very thankful that I'm able to drink water that touched the plant, coffee, or tea. Yeah. And I can have garlic powder, garlic. You know, my father in law, he gets really creative in the kitchen and with meats. And he enjoys for me letting me try. I think he he misses me having variety more than I do, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he tries to bring in all of these different meats and different spices. And every once in a while, something will kind of bother my stomach for a little bit. But for the most part, I don't have to be careful. I don't I don't feel limited. And I can see how with spices, going to a restaurant or having family cook for you, that would be so limiting. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Like for the first couple of years, just eating like beef or just eating the ruminant meat, it- it's really hard. You you completely scratch your social life without yes. the spices. Like ordering at restaurants is annoying. Like yep. scrub the grill. Don't use oil. Don't use butter. No salt and pepper. Completely bare. Like I, I know how to order now, but at the beginning it was awkward. And right. and I got hit a couple of times with, I went to Florida and the grill had, their normal seasoning had garlic in it. Okay. And they didn't scrub the grill well enough. So I had like remnants of garlic on my steak and I was screwed up for a week oh with like bloating. I had brain fog so badly I got lost, but that was when I still had C. diff. So my gut was just in terrible shape. So I haven't tried anything like that yet, but I can get hit with pepper and it doesn't seem to bother me. So I think I'm on the road to spices, but for people, I usually recommend if people have, if people have been on, especially psych meds or suffer from psych problems, Um, the reason I push this lion diet is because it gives people a good baseline to start from. Like if you can do spices, do spices, it'll (laughs) spice up your life, right? It'll make things way more interesting, but you know, start very small. If you're really, really, really sick, especially with autoimmune disorders or psych problems, if you're trying to lose weight, generally you can do like a more varied, varied for carnivore. You can do spices, you can do all these things. Um, but if you're dealing with like serious autoimmune or mental damage, be very, very easy on yourself. Yeah. I think that's why at first, when I heard about your protocol, what I was missing was your why. I, oh you yeah. Know, nobody told me why you were doing this. So to me, it was like, why would you cut out other meats? I didn't get that. I just didn't get that. Yeah. Why um, unnecessarily restrict kind yes, of thing? Right. Yeah. Well, right. And that's fair. And it turns people off, right? Like an all beef diet is way harder than a carnivore diet. It is. But the reason I do it is because a carnivore diet wouldn't have worked for me. Yeah. Like any type of dairy, I would have been sick as a dog. And even though at first I wondered why you were so strict one thing i have come to appreciate about you is you want it to be crazy accessible and and you and i are so similar in that when we see sick and hurting people we don't want to say now here are the 27 steps that you need to improve your health we really you and i both want it to be like look you got to cut out all these grains and carbs and get some fatty meat and just go with that So you do, you love the simplicity. It's just, unfortunately for you, it had to also be like strict simplicity for a while. Yeah. That's why I I really like what Sean is doing. He can be, he can be harsh, but it's like eat steak and drink water. Yeah. And um, that's really easy for people. They're like, I like steak. I can do that. And if it's like eat steak and drink water and make sure you end up with these micronutrients, and make sure you eat this part of the animal so that you get your 
I don't know, whatever, right. then it, people are like, eh, no, you don't need very many things to stop you from trying the diet because yeah. who wants to cut out all their yummy foods? Yeah, it's hard enough. That's what I always say. It's hard enough without telling someone you also need to drink blood, right? <laughs> My gosh. I heard someone suggest that to you the other day and you were like, mm, I'm, pro- I'm not going to do that. And I thought, same, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I mean, if yeah, I was- you could get it from this, nah. No, Mm-mm. not doing yeah. it either. Do you view yourself as part of the carnivore community more now than you used to? Or is that not of interest? There are some carnivores who say, yeah, I'm doing my own thing. I don't need a community. If I could eat plants again, I would. Like, you're not really here for the community <laughs> of it. Does that make sense? Um, I'm not. Yeah. And I have I have a couple of Facebook groups. I have one that's don't eat that. And it it's not, you know, it, there's a lot of carnivores in there, but it's okay. for people who are really trying to get back to more foods. Mm-hmm. And they're they're looking at more than just diet. And then I have the lion diet facebook group and i keep that to like these are for people who don't want to be part of other groups because they're only doing ruminant meat salt and water and so i have those two groups and i think the community aspect is insanely important especially if you're starting out like i was so alone um i did when i didn't know about the carnivore community when i first started i was just like i am the only person who does this and i'm a freak but i'm really ill otherwise so oh well Um, so I think the carnivore community is so necessary for people. And then there are people who they're in their family, the people they're living with aren't into it and they're like by themselves there. So, um, I would say I, I like the carnivore community. I do think it, depending on where you are, people get too dogmatic, but people get too dogmatic about literally anything. So it's to be expected. And this diet changes people's lives so much that it's not surprising that people spend the rest of their life talking about it to help other people. I mean, I'm doing that partly too. Um, so I don't know. I like the carnivore community, but I never really wanted to be into diet. Like I never, I was never interested in that and not even a little bit. I just kind of had to do it to, in order to survive. When you first started talking lion diet, there was a big community of carnivores already out there. Like, we had been talking about, I first found them in 2009, but mm-hmm. even when I found them in 2009, that group was huge. There were huge, not thousands, hundreds. So I found a forum of hundreds of carnivores that felt huge because I thought in 2009, I was the only one. Yeah. And, and in, in my world, I was, and then I found this group and I was like, oh, and so for me, I am definitely a community person. I was like, my people. These are my people. And so I became very tribal. Like, and, and I still, the exact same group of people that I was with then, they are still on, on the channel all the time. I interact with them all the time. It just became such a big part of my life. And yeah, at well, least- I like that though. I uh-huh. like that about what you do too on your channel. It's very positive and it's very homey and it, it's very family oriented kind of. So it, like when you join your channel or look at your Instagram or whatever, like it's, very family-like, which is good because when people start this diet, it's very isolating. So they need that. Um, I like it. And I started the Facebook groups I had because I didn't want people to be alone. So I completely understand where it's coming from. Uh, I just, you know what, you know why I, I'm not as involved. The reason I'm not as involved is because if you're an outsider and you look in, we look like a bunch of weirdos. (laughs) And in order to make this diet not weird, you can't be in it. So I have this podcast. I've got this podcast going. And the reason I stick the carnivore diet in there sometimes is because I can attract a group of people who wouldn't be interested in the diet and then give them this information in a way that's kind of accessible and it's not too, too much. Yeah. And then sneak people in that way. Not that I'm like trying to sneak people in, but I want people to find this information without it being weird to them. No, that really does. That makes sense. Sometimes people will do that. Like even with religion, food and religion, I have found have a lot of similarities, but you know, if you were to just go handing pamphlets to people, they're like, Oh, but you know, if you go build them a house and, and then wave and say, bye, Jesus loves you at the end. They're like, Oh, I didn't know that's what this was about, but exactly what I'm doing. Okay, cool. All right. (laughs) You know, like that was weird. And then you hear it a couple of times. You're like, maybe there's something to that. But the reason that gets me so excited is because you're right. 
you know, hundreds of thousands of people listening to your podcast, they may not like it, but they at least know that carnivore is a thing now. They've yeah. heard of it. They've heard of it. And when, you know, when they do have a health concern later or exactly someone else, it's it's back there. A little voice. Yeah. And I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I have I have people listening that they're like, well, I'm not going to do it. But I did meet someone and she had really bad arthritis. And I told them about your story. Yeah. And so that's kind of what what I want to get be, what I want to do. That's what I'm trying to do. Just normalize it a little bit. Make it less that. weird because it's so absurd. I know from coming from the standard American <laughs> diet. And then especially one that you hear that's just room and salt and water. Right. Or like that's also why I've been calling it an elimination diet because uh -huh. that people can wrap their heads around better. And yes. even if I'm going to be on it forever, um, although technically I'm not because I'm drinking tea and eating chicken. But uh, if I was to stick with it forever, I would still yeah refer to it as an elimination diet to make it more accessible. When I'm only in these little groups and only on my Instagram and on this channel surrounded by carnivores, I really start to think for real that people are getting it. They're and not. Then, no, no. It is tiny. <laughs> like keto is fringe. Yeah. Paleo is still fringe. And paleo is like here. Right. Keto is like here. I mean, Carnivore is like barely yeah. even existing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to make it more. Yeah. Yeah. So at a party or something, someone will offer me something. And then my kids are the worst. They're the worst to out me. If it was just me, I might say, oh, I'm okay. I'm not really that hungry right now. Then my kids are like, she only eats meat. <laughs> I know those people, children. Yeah, uh, yeah right. I, I've hung around. Like I have friends that'll go out with, they'll do the same thing. I'll yes. be like, nah, I'm okay. She only eats meat. She's a carnivore. I'm like, you don't I don't want to do this right now, guys. Thanks, yeah. though. Yes. But then when I see people's reaction, you realize, oh, yeah, people are definitely not getting it. It's not that everyone has now heard of it. That's how it starts to feel. Oh, everybody's heard this now. Yeah, not even so. close. Mm -hmm. Well, all the more reason that I'm thrilled that you have your podcast. Tell people um, the best ways to find you, Michaela. Instagram, I'm very active on. So that's Michaela Peterson. Uh, and that's M-I-K-H-A-I-L-A -A Peterson. And then my YouTube. And that's, I do about 50% of my guests are health oriented. They're not necessarily carnivores. They're, they have, there are some other diets, but they're, it's in the carnivore realm. Um, so 50% are health people. And then 50% are self-improvement or political, something like that. And that's Michaela Peterson on YouTube. And then I have a website, Michaela Peterson. I have the Facebook groups I mentioned. Yeah, your yeah. website, MichaelaPeterson.com, has a ton of great info. I was just reading on it this week. If people want to just read, just go and read. Yeah, I, I used to. I really need to update it. The last two years have been so insane with my family's health that I stopped writing blog posts. But when I first went to carnivore and before that, when I was on the low carb diet, I did a lot of writing about what I was experiencing and reactions I was having. Like there's, you know, there's ridiculous posts like not you don't take pills because of the fillers because I was reacting to fillers at that point. I don't react to those anymore, but I was very sensitive. So there's a lot of there's a lot of information, but it's a little dated because I haven't gotten back into it yet this year, though. But it's the information is there for people to find it. And it's really solid if someone wants to know. But for the most part, this is a smaller uh, carnivore channel. People get you like here, like I say, safe space. People 100 percent are they're going to they're going to feel your pain for some of the things you've been through. And they totally get why you're doing it now and how it can feel isolating. And you are going to have um, a lot of people cheering you on here. And I am, I am right there with them. I adore Aww. you. I always liked you because you were just, you seemed honest and kind and insanely sexy without even trying to be. And I just <laughs> liked you. I just liked you, but now, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but but now that I've really delved into your life, I feel like I've gotten to know your family this past week or two, and and I'm just a bigger fan than ever. And I'm so grateful that you took the time to come here and that you do continue to share, even when I know it has to be hard because you already have. I sometimes share and people might think, oh, she's just sharing to try to get fans or to try to get viewers. And that's not true. But I could see how someone would say that you've already got viewers for you to share is at almost at the risk of turning people off. 
And oh I yeah, a hundred percent. Right. It's like entirely risk. Yes. But um, but then you get to the one person that's really ill or that knows somebody who's really ill, and then they try it, and then they're not ill anymore. Yeah. And then they message, and then anyone who's been chronically ill knows that. Well, if you're chronically ill, you only have one goal, and it's to not be sick. Right. right? Any of these people who are like trying to use self improvement to improve their life, yeah, don't really have any problems. Right. Like right. compared to just trying to not die. So I'm trying to get to those people. And if there's a risk at turning some people off who aren't in the position of just trying to not die, that's OK. Thank you for all that you do. And I'm excited to call you a friend now. Thank you. Aww. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thanks so much for having me on. And I really appreciate what you do and the communities you've made, too. I think it's really important. Great. Thank you. I'll see you on Instagram. <laughs>